Great to have you back in the second lesson of fluids and what we learn in this lesson is what is the pressure at various points within a body of liquid or fluid which is static, which is stationary, which is not moving. So to understand this, consider a situation where you are at a sea level. So let's go ahead and represent the sea level in this diagram over here. And let us also consider a body of fluid which is let's say in the shape of a cylinder inside the sea and this is the cylinder of fluid under consideration and let us say its upper level is at y1 if if this is y0 or y equal to 0 let us say that this is at y1 so this level over here is at y1 likewise Let's assume that its lower level is at level y2. Then if this is the case, let's try to examine this as a free body and, and make a free body diagram of this cylinder. And to do this, let's assume there's a force F1 acting on this at the top. Let's represent it with this arrow. This is force F1 acting on top. And let us also assume there's a force F2 acting at the bottom of the cylinder. And we also know that there will be mass Mg acting in downward direction where M is the mass of the cylinder. So if this is a situation, we can write Newton's second law of motion for this cylinder over here. And the equation we know for Newton's second law of motion is f is equal to m a where m is the mass of the body and a is acceleration induced in the body on account of the force impressed on it or rather the net force impressed on it so let's go ahead and write all the forces acting on the cylinder on the left hand side and if we use the notation of all vectors pointing in downward direction is negative and upward direction is positive what we'll get is f 2 would be positive because it's acting in upward direction f1 will be negative because it's acting in downward direction and so will be mg which is acting in downward direction and this should equal to the product of mass and acceleration but we know that this will be equal to zero because the acceleration is zero because the cylinder is stationary it is not moving remember we are considering static fluids not dynamic fluids so if if you write this equation this way, our equation will change to F2 minus F1 minus Mg is equal to 0. Or we can say that F2 is equal to F1 plus Mg. Now, let us say if you were to write F2 and F1 in the form of pressure, we know that pressure is nothing but force acting per unit area in which case we can say that force is nothing but the product of pressure and area now if we assume that the area of the cylinder that the top part or the circular part is a then the force acting on it f1 can be represented as p1 a1 and f2 as p2 a2 so let's go ahead and write f2 or the force acting from bottom as a product of pressure acting at the bottom into the area at the bottom which we assume as a and this should equal to p1 a1 plus m into g and the mass of this cylinder can also be written as m is equal to the product of density of water into the volume of the cylinder and we know that the volume of the cylinder can be written as its area at the top into the height of the cylinder which is nothing but y1 minus y2 and you got to remember that y1 and y2 both are negative numbers in which case this would be a positive quantity so let's go ahead and substitute the value of mass over here which is rho into a into y1 minus y2 into g and you'll quickly see that the area A is getting cancelled in this equation. So while deriving pressure equation for a fluid, area is of no consequence. So let's then write this as P2 is equal to P1 
plus rho into y1 minus y2 into g. So this kind of a standard equation, let's call this equation 1. Or let's use a different color. Let's write this as equation 1. Then if we assume that y1 minus y2 is the height of the cylinder, let's say this is height, then we can write this equation again as p2 is equal to p1 plus rho g h. And if you try to interpret this equation in a more physical way, what you can say is that pressure 2 at this level is equal to pressure 1 at the top plus the pressure due to the liquid column of height h. So if this is pressure 2 and this is pressure 1 or rather the pressure at this point is pressure 1 and the pressure at this point is pressure 2 then p2 and p1 can be related by this equation where we write p2 is equal to p1 plus the pressure due to the column of liquid over here and it is written as rho gh. So what you'll see is that while we find pressure at various points within a liquid what is of consequence is the height between two points and has got nothing to do with area or an inclined dimension between two points. It's just the straight height between the two points. Now, let's take a special case where this cylinder of fluid is right at the top. So, instead of this cylinder being submerged, assume this cylinder is at the top. Then let's go ahead and write the same y2 and y1 values over here. So, let's say the lower level is at y2 and the upper level is at y1. And if you were to write the same equation, that is this equation for this situation, what you'll get is that P2 or the pressure over here, let's label it as P2 and this as P1. What you'll see is that P2 is equal to P1 plus rho into y1 minus y2 into g or p2 is equal to p1 which is nothing but p0 or the atmospheric pressure because you can see that at this level there's no other liquid column above it it's only the atmosphere above it which is causing the pressure at this level so we can write p1 as equal to p0 or the atmospheric pressure plus rho into y1 minus y2 is again nothing but the height of this column. So let's go ahead and substitute y1 minus y2 as h into g and more commonly it is written as rho g h. So in this situation what we say is that the pressure at this point or this level is equal to p0 which is atmospheric pressure plus the column of water above this level which is rho g h so this is the pressure represented by the water column above this level and very often this is written as or rather this is described by scientists as the absolute pressure so the scientists might say that the absolute pressure or they might just say the pressure at this point is p naught plus rho g h and you should uh, assume this is the absolute pressure while other scientists might say, well, the pressure over here is P2 equal to just rho GH, in which case this is termed as the gauge pressure. So what the scientists are doing is they are ignoring the atmospheric pressure above and they're just talking about the pressure on account of the liquid column. It's one and the same thing. It's just the way the scientists want to represent the pressure at a point. Now, let us take a third situation where instead of the liquid, we consider the atmosphere itself and find what is the pressure at various points. So, to do so, we'll consider an air column instead of a liquid column or rather an air cylinder above the liquid surface and this is nothing but air. So, once again, we go ahead and write that this would become your Y2 level and this will become your y1 level for the cylinder and let us say here the pressure is p2 and here the pressure is p1 
and let us say this time around the height is d. In that case, we can once again write the same equation for this situation and it would look something like this that uh, p2 is equal to p1 plus rho g into d. So y1 minus y2 is nothing but d over here. But what you'll observe is that p2 over here is the atmospheric pressure because this is the pressure at the sea level and we know any pressure at the sea level is considered atmospheric pressure. So let's go ahead and substitute P0 for P2 and this should equal P1 plus rho G into D in which case pressure P1 at this point or this level rather is equal to P0 minus rho G D. So how you'll interpret this equation is that while the pressure at the sea level is P0 or atmospheric pressure, but as you go up, the column of air which weighs down at various levels keeps reducing and therefore the pressure reduces by the level by which you go up. So in this case, if you've gone up to this level, the column of air represented by this height gets reduced at this level and therefore pressure P1 is P0 atmospheric pressure minus rho GD and remember D is a positive number so P1 is actually less than P0 by a component rho GD which is a pressure represented by this air column.